It was in the year 1956 that the Indian Ministry of Defense gave Hindustan Aeronautics Limited the responsibility of creating an indigenous fighter aircraft. It was not just the first homemade fighter plane for India, but also for the whole of Asia. The development of the Marut was a major achievement for India's aerospace sector, since it represented the nation's debut in the market for fighter jets. The aircraft served the Indian Air Force for more than two decades and even participated in the 1971 war. So, why was the fighter aircraft considered to be a failure? This is Athena's lab, and today we will discuss the HAL Marut, Asia's first fighter jet program. The basic design of the HAL Marut was based on the British fighter aircraft Fallen Nat, for which India had won a license to build it locally. Nevertheless, it was quickly apparent that extensive design changes were necessary to fulfill Indian Air Force's specifications. Kurt Tank, a German scientist, was approached to assist with the development of the aircraft. Under Tank's direction, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited modified the NAT design significantly to meet IAF specifications. These changes included a larger wing area, a delta wing design, a pressurized cockpit, upgraded avionics, strengthened landing gear, and additional weaponry. On June 17, 1961, the first Marut prototype made its first flight. In the 1950s, testing processes for fighter planes were not as rigorous as they are now, due to the lack of modern technology and testing methodologies. Yet, the testing methods for the HAL Marut fighter plane were extensive for its time. The testing procedure included both on the ground and in the air trials designed to assess the plane's speed, maneuverability, and firepower. The avionics, fuel system, engine performance, and other systems of the aircraft were also examined during the ground testing. On the ground, in a test hangar, or on a dedicated test rig, these trials were put to the test. The fighter jet was also designed to be a supersonic jet which were considered a major technological achievement during the 1960s. They represented a significant advance over the generation of fighter aircraft that came before them, similar to how today's fifth-generation fighters are an improvement over the previous generation of fighter aircraft. In a nutshell, the HF-24 Marut was an ambitious and difficult undertaking for India's nascent defense sector, but it ran across a number of obstacles that ultimately led to its premature retirement from duty. In the 1950s, India had only just gotten rid of colonial rule. As the British left India in 1947, they used up all of its resources and riches. India also had to deal with a number of geopolitical problems. The country was still dealing with the effects of partition and its ongoing conflict with Pakistan. The Chinese invasion of Tibet in 1950 and subsequent border wars with India heightened India's security concerns further. India's policy of non-alignment created a distance between India and the two superpowers as India did not align itself with either side. In light of this, the development of the HF-24 Marut was considered a strategic need for India. This is when India ran into its first problem, the engine. Making fighter engines was, and still is a hard thing to do. Few countries were able to make engines for their fighters. India had no alternative but to outsource its engines to other nations during its early days of independence due to economic problems. The Maruts were powered by Bristol Siddeley 703 turbojets, which were seriously inadequate for a jet expected to attain Mach 2 speeds. 
In 1961, the Soviet government was asked to investigate the possibility of equipping the HF-24 with Russian RD-9F turbojets, which are superior to British engines, because they can reach speeds of Mach 1.5. However, the Indians were unable to obtain the engines from the Soviet Union because the required level of detailed information on manufacturing the RD-9F, without which, they would not have been able to manufacture it themselves. The design team was forced to adopt the Orpheus 703 engines, which also powered the NAT as an interim solution. The absence of a suitable power plant prevented the Marut from fulfilling its function as an interceptor, however it had the potential to be a respectable ground assault fighter bomber. The Mark I of Marut fighters was equipped with two Bristol Siddeley Orpheus 703 afterburning engines, while the Mark II was a planned variant with a pair of Rolls-Royce Turbomeca engines. However, the Mark II never saw the light of day as a production fighter. In June of 1966, a group of Indian Air Force test pilots and engineers traveled to Helwan in Egypt with an HF-24 Marut that was in the pre-production phase so that it could undergo testing with an E-300 engine. The Six-Day War of 1967 altered the geopolitical landscape and the IAF crew returned to India in 1969, leaving the aircraft behind. It was envisaged that the Egyptian E-300 engine could attain Mach 2.0 in 2.5 minutes after launch. Nevertheless, takeoff tests indicated engine teething issues and the development of the engine was later terminated. As the Indian government pursued a domestic nuclear program, the availability of more promising engine installations from international manufacturers diminished. After the successful execution of India's first nuclear test on May 18, 1974, which was given the code name Smiling Buddha, various Western nations put economic and technological sanctions on India. Because of this, it has been difficult for India to get engines and other important technologies from other Western nations. Another problem with the Marut was its low range and endurance, which rendered it unsuitable for long-range missions. A lack of modern avionics and armament systems further hindered the aircraft's combat effectiveness. In addition, the Marut faced competition from foreign aircraft, such as the Anglo-French Sepikat Jaguar and Soviet MiG-21, which were considered more competent and dependable than the indigenous Marut. The Marut was discontinued as a consequence of these concerns. But in my opinion, the HAL Marut is not a failure at all. Here are a few reasons why the HAL Marut cannot be considered a failure. It was the first fighter jet designed and built in India. The project contributed to the development of India's skills in aeronautical engineering and design. The HAL Marut had a delta wing design and excellent avionics for its day, making it a highly advanced aircraft. The delta wing design of the HAL Marut was a considerable divergence from the typical swept wing designs used by other fighter planes at the period. This design was eventually used in the HAL Tejas, which also featured a delta wing configuration. It was India's first attempt at developing a supersonic combat jet. The HAL Marut served in the Indian Air Force and was deployed in conflicts such as the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971. The Indian military gave great importance on the aircraft's capacity to provide close air support to ground forces. Our fighter and bomber aircraft devoted almost all their effort to knocking out enemy strong points, gun positions, tanks, vehicles and the like.
which obstructed the advance of our ground forces.